Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Continuing our complete beginner's guide with a brand new character, and this time we're going for a spellcaster. So as things get more difficult, and we get more comfortable with the game, we can pick a more difficult character to play, which is a spellcaster. Now, spellcasters for me have always been very difficult in this game because they're so flimsy. Uh, and they're also challenging because there are so many different ways to use spells, decisions that you have to make um, that are less straightforward than a melee character. So you have less survivability, um, at least in terms of hit points and armor, and you have more options and decisions that you have to make. So it's definitely harder than the previous two characters, at least for me, mentally, uh, to get my head around and to be successful with. So if you're new to the series, I have a complete run through of a three rune victory with a Minotaur Berserker, melee character, easiest character to play for a new player. Then we go into a ranged character, a gargoyle hunter of Okawaru to show you what's possible if you want to shoot things from far away. And now we're going to do um, another build, which is going to be just a pure glass cannon spellcaster. Now, there's lots and lots of ways to play a spellcaster in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, but of course my purpose here is to give you one that I think will be uh, easy to use, powerful, and pretty typical in terms of what you would expect from a nuker. Now, there's more hybrid type characters you could play. Uh, there's different kinds of fun that you can go for, but I'm going to do a deep elf conjurer, okay? Because that's basically the kind of bread and butter start for a pure DPS caster. Now, um, you'll notice that I'm not using a simple species. I'm using an intermediate species, which is the Deep Elf. Now, let me give you some other options. A Gargoyle caster is actually a pretty good choice for a new player because Gargoyles are so hardy. Uh, not in terms of hit points, but they get armor, lots of resists, and are really, really good. But my last character is a Gargoyle, so I don't want to do Gargoyle again. A Draconian is fine, you know, presumably, depending on what kind of uh, transformation you have. Uh, but... I think that your best choices for a caster are over here in the intermediate species range, and I have to think that that's intentional by the developers, which is to kind of say that spellcasting is a more advanced uh, way to go about trying to get Zot's Orb. Spellcasters are, in this game, they start out very, very weak, but can transcend into extremely powerful levels with just screen crushing aoe nukes and things like that but you have to get there um and there's less margin for error than there is with you know a more tanky uh, melee type character who doesn't have to rely on something like having magic points to fight now if you choose an intermediate species we're gonna do deep elf but i think tengu is also fine so is spriggan um, Genie is a lot of fun if you don't mind randomly getting your spells. So, you, you know, this could be real hit and miss, very big swings. Um, Cobalt and Human, eh, you know. Um, but the other real option I would give you is an Ogre. I actually have a guide on an Ogre Venom Mage as a beautiful way to start playing a caster in Dungeon Crawl. If you're interested, I'll link it in the description below. And they're nice because Ogres have a lot of hit points, so you have a little bit more wiggle room to just take some damage as your caster. But I think most people, when they want to play a caster, they want to nuke, they want to do DPS and blast things. So we're going to go with a Deep Elf. So I'm going to select the Deep Elf. You'll notice that all of my backgrounds are in the mage category. And we're going to choose Conjurer. Now, all of these are viable. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think that the Conjurer starting spellbook is just fantastic for a new player because it gives you some good damage options that will last you even if you don't get a great spellbook right away. Uh, so this is what I would recommend if you're starting out. But of course, if you want to play a summoner or do, you know, a more specialized caster, go for it. I don't really like um, 
hedge wizard as a background myself, uh, but some people might really enjoy it. So I'm going to go conjure. Now, um, when we launch into the world, let's take a look at where we're at. So we start with 10 hit points and 6 magic points. Magic points are going to be the lifeblood of your spellcaster. Spellcasting got a huge boost, in my opinion, um, in the last few versions because they removed food, which by extension removed spell hunger from the game. It used to be like casting certain high-level spells would make you really, really hungry, and so food would become an extra problem for a caster that you'd have to deal with and consider. No more. So we have 6 magic points and 10 health, and we have a 4 strength, 22 intelligence, which is massive, and a 13 dex. So our strength is god-awful. Um, which is going to pretty much preclude us from wearing heavy armor uh, forever, unless something magnificent happens, and that's okay. You'll notice, though, that our evasion is actually 12. So this is a character that, unlike the previous two characters, is going to try to rely on dodging more than armor class, which is very gambly. So I'm going to go ahead and push M to look at our skills. And I'm going to currently only be focusing on spellcasting and conjuration, which are our spellcasting skills. So I'm going to turn off dodging and I'm going to turn off stealth. Now conjuration is the school of magic that governs the spell book that we start with because we're a conjuration caster. Conjuration basically just means damage, like you're conjuring damage to blast people. Okay, so most spells that shoot at people and do damage have some kind of conjuration in them, all right? And here we go. So I'm going to show you um, my spells. Now, I start with Magic Dart memorized, and it is actually set as my uh, quick cast. So if I push F, um, it's going to be casting Magic Dart. Now, remember, with our previous character, F was what we would do to fire our, met our uh, bow. But in the more recent versions, they've allowed you to just kind of have F as a hotkey to set to whatever you want. And you can push capital Q to change what is triggered when you push F. So right now we're doing magic dart. Now magic dart, I'll show you here. We're going to push shift I and bring up um, our spells that we know. And this is magic dart. It's a conjuration type. We have only a 1% failure on it in its first level. I'm going to click on it. And this is a more detailed piece of information about the spell. Now let's look at all of this information. So it's level one. So spells cost magic points equal to the level that they are. So a level one spell takes one magic point, a level two spell takes two, and so on. Power is 88%, meaning that based on our skill with conjuration, um, we are doing 88% of the max power that this spell can do. So it's not doing its full potential yet. We'd have to level up and um, improve our skills to get the full benefit of this. It does one dice seven damage, meaning one to seven damage. Um, it automatically hits, it can't miss, which is great. And it has a very long range. Magic Dart's tremendous because it has an insane range. So when you're looking at range, you are the at sign and then each dash represents a square. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven is the range. It's almost silent. That's actually important to look at for noise because if you cast really noisy spells, then enemies will hear you and crowd the location. So for example, like lightning is very loud. Um, it's great because it's powerful, but it will also attract a lot of attention. Um, miscasting the spell causes magic contamination. And we'll talk about that as we go. This basically is something that's dangerous and will dissuade you from trying to cast higher level spells because the effect of miscasting is um, quite potent. But with a low level spell, um, your miscast effects are less worrisome. Now, you'll notice that the fail rate is 1% and it's in gray. So that means that what we're worried about with contamination is not a big deal. Now, you can also push Z, okay, and it will say casting magic dart. Z is your cast spell button, and you can push question mark to get a list of spells, which is very, very similar to what we just saw. And you can also um, push shift M 
to open up your spell books and see what spells are available for you to memorize okay now it used to be that you'd have to carry spell books around um but you don't in this and what you get to do now is just automatically acquire the spell book and then you know all the spells and you can always push shift m to see what spells you have available these are all the spells that you'll start with every single time as a conjuration or as a conjurer i should say so you can see we get Searing Ray, Dazzling Flash, Fulminant Prism, and Iskenderan's Mystic Blast, or IMB, as they call it. Now, Searing Ray is an outrageously powerful spell, and we're going to get that, but we can't get it until we're second level. So you cannot learn a spell unless you are at least that experience level or higher, okay? Um, and you can see that for these higher level spells, they start to have fail rates that are quite high and the color is in purple this color will intensify um all the way up to like a horrifying red color indicating that the failure is has more and more dire consequences if this number is in white or in gray you don't really have to worry about it but as it changes colors you need to be more concerned about having a negative consequence um from casting a spell magical contamination can be really bad because um, you can get mutations and things from it that could be debilitating uh, among other results so right now um, we just have magic dart and we begin with magic dart memorized and five spell levels left and every level you'll get another spell level and every level of spell casting will also give you another spell level so you get more spell levels by raising your spell casting skill and by leveling up yourself so you need to be careful you can't just get memorize every spell that's out there because you're going to use up your available spell levels okay um however you can use a scroll of amnesia to forget a spell that you don't want to use and free up those spell levels all right now from this screen of the memorize screen, you can also use the exclamation point to shift between memorizing, uh, describing the spell, okay, um, and show or hide the spell. Um, just like you can knock spells off the list, I suppose, if you want. Um, and I'm gonna push escape. Now, here's another thing that I always do as a spellcaster to make my life easier, okay? You can auto explore, but you can't really auto fight in the same way that a uh, melee character can but you can reduce your key presses now right now i can just push f and then target something with magic dart and blast it and that's fine but you can also push shift tilde okay and open up this screen and then go down to the tilde selection for edit macro and you can create or edit a macro from a key okay so select create edit macro and then i'm going to push one Okay, I'm going to push number one on the on the uh, number keys above the letters right here. And then it's going to say input new macro for one. Okay, so this is going to require you to know exactly what keys you press to fire a spell. But I'll show you here what you want to do. You're going to push Z for spell casting. You're going to push A, which um, corresponds to magic dart because it's our first spell on the list. And then you're going to push F, which means fire the spell at the target, and then enter. Okay, so now I have a macro that's Z-A-F. And I'll show you right here. If I push Z, it'll bring up this casting screen. And then if I push A, it will select Magic Dart. And then if there was a target on the screen, it would select that target and fire at it. Now, this macro is great when there's only one target that you want to fire at. But if there's more than one target, um, F is going to use what the game uh, chooses as your auto target and it might not be the one you want to fire at so in those cases you're going to need to do more precision aiming and you're going to want to use just f or just push z and then the spell and then target it specifically um, but when you don't have to worry about it you can just push one and now blast things with magic dart um, more smoothly now there's also a dagger and a club here if i push i you'll notice that all we start with is a potion of magic and a rope all right, we don't even have a weapon, so we need a weapon. I want this dagger, um, and I'm going to pick up the dagger, walk over to it, push G, and I'm going to push um, W to wield um, the hand weapon. I'm going to select it, the dagger. So now we have a dagger. I like daggers. I'll push I to show you because 
um, you can see that it has a base accuracy of plus six, which means it's just much easier to hit. I don't have any training in weapons, so I'm not very good, but at least I can get a hit off with this. So right now, we're training spellcasting conjurations to start, and let me just kind of go over this with you. I didn't explain it, I just kind of told you to do it, but spellcasting governs how well you understand how to cast all spells. What this means is it gives you spell schools, and it also gives you magic points um, when you skill it up. So you'll get more uh, spell levels to memorize, and you'll get more magic points. One magic point for every uh, point in, or skill level of spell casting. Additionally, it gives you um, a boost of 25% efficiency to cast any spell. Whereas Conjurations, for example, governs any spell that has Conjuration as part of its type. So some spells like Magic Dart are pure Conjuration. Others are kind of split up. They might be like Ice, Conjuration, something like that. And then they use both skills to determine the power level and the efficacy of the spell, the fail rate. And Conjurations determines at a ratio of 4 to 1 um, how effective your spell is going to be and the fail rate of it versus spell casting. So it's always better to raise the specific skill level if you're trying to get fail rate down and do more damage with the spell. But spell casting is great because it's kind of everything, it gives you levels and uh, magic points. So we're going to do both. And all right, right away, we see a bat. Now we're a deep elf and our stealth is pretty reasonable. If I push shift five, you can see I have two pips of stealth because. Um, I'm wearing light armor, and I'm kind of sneaky. You can train stealth if you like. I don't really care about it that much as a spellcaster, uh, unless I want to play more of a backstabby type character. Now, what I'm going to do with the bat in range is just push the one that we just assigned to the macro. So you'll see that will automatically just launch out to dart. And the beautiful thing is, magic dart can't miss. So we hit and we kill it. So it's great for being you know, at least efficient in the sense that bats are hard to hit, they have a lot of evasion, but that will um, absolutely annihilate something like that. Now, the downside, of course, of something like Magic Dart is that I believe its uh, damage is mitigated by um, guaranteed damage reduction, so really, really high armor class monsters might not take any damage at all from it later in the game, but for now, it should do a pretty good job. And there's some chainmail. We're not going to wear that. But I'm just going to push O to auto explore, pick up the emerald potion, and let's look around. And we got another potion. Here's a dart slug. Okay, so this guy is kind of hard for us because he's going to shoot exactly what we're doing at us. But um, I'm going to do it and see if we can kill him before he kills us. And indeed, we did. I'm going to push 5 to rest to get back to full magic points. You're generally going to want to rest all the time. You won't see your hit points drop as often with this character because hopefully you're not getting hit. But what you do need to do is make sure you're topped off on magic points before you run around. Because trying to get into a fight with low magic is uh, kind of how you lose. Alright, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to pick up these stones um, just maybe to have something to throw. Ooh, there's a magical hand axe. We'll use that. Alright, here comes some kobold. I'll see how we do. I'm going to kill one and two. Alright, great. And I'm going to rest over here. Okay, and let's see. This is a uh, hand axe of freezing. I'm going to get that. I'm actually going to use it. Hand axe um, is only plus three accuracy, but it has higher base damage, and the freezing brand is just nice, so we'll take it. Might as well. Uh, I'll hit this guy with magic dart and this guy with magic dart. Um, and I kind of closed the distance there to try to hit with my axe, but. Um, as you can see, I got hit, and it's a good lesson. An axe with a character like this is only, okay, useful as a last resort or if you're out of magic points or both. But you don't want to generally lean on something like that. All right, boom. We just hit level two. We killed that ball python. Now, I'm going to go backward. You can see level two. We got ourselves two magic points and five hit points. I'm going to rest. All right. And I'm going to go shift M. And we're going to memorize now Searing Ray. You see that we can get it now because we're second level. There's only a 2% fail on this. And I'm going to memorize this spell. And it will say at the bottom, Memorize Searing Ray, consuming two spell levels and leaving five. Okay, so um, we got ourselves two spell levels right there by leveling up to level two. And we're going to say yes. 
Fantastic. Um, okay. So now we have Searing Ray, and it's set to B. So I'm going to push Shift tilde, and I'm going to go to Edit Macro. So I'm going to push tilde again, and I'm going to say Create Edit a Macro from Key, and I'm going to push number two, and I'm going to say Z, B, F. Okay? So now we will cast our second spell, which is Searing Ray. If you ever want to see this, you can push Z, question mark, and you can see your list of spells and the letters that correspond to each spell. I'm going to search around. Hobgoblin trying to hide from us. Blast him. He wasn't aware. Blast this guy. Rest. And this is Magic Dart. Magic Dart has huge range and it hits. So as long as you can get enemies away from you, you're in a good spot. Now, I think this is a good time to show off Searing Ray. I'm going to step back right here. And I'm going to fire Searing Ray at this giant cockroach. I'm going to push two. Okay? Now, we hit the giant cockroach and look how much damage we did. Searing Ray does cost two magic points because it's level two, but it's incredibly powerful. Now, what you can do though with Searing Ray is increase its power level by, instead of casting it again, pushing the period to, as it says there, maintain the ray. So if I push Searing Ray, if I push period, we will blast this guy, and I'm going to do it again, and okay, great. So we killed the cockroach, and now I'm going to just use Magic Dart uh, and kill the Dart Slug. We took some damage, but I'm going to hide around here. Searing Ray will kill a surprising amount of enemies as long as you keep it focused on them and just stand there and let it um, maintain. It builds up its power level, so it's a very, very nice spell to have. Here comes an Endoplasm, um, which can be annoying, but we got it. And we found a nice scroll. Remember, I'm not going to read any scrolls until the first floor is entirely cleared. No reason to right now. Unless I was in an emergency and had to do a Hail Mary. But I'm not in an emergency. Our spellcasting skill goes up to level 4. And you can see we got an extra magic point as a result of that. Um, and we got a spell level as a result of it. Alright. Blast. Blast. And level 3. So, at level 3, you're going to want to throw your stats into intelligence. Intelligence is the primary stat for a spellcaster, obviously, and you want to have as high of an intelligence as possible to do more damage and to have less fill rate with your spells. So I'm going to go right there. Um, we level up. We got another magic point. If I go here, you could see we got another spell level, um, and we're cooking with gas. Now, I could memorize Dazzling Flash, but its failure rate is red at 11%. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier. Purple is the worst. Red is not quite as bad. Um, okay. I was thinking more in terms of the rating of enemies, and, you know, red is, dark red is the worst enemy threat level you can see, but purple is, they use a different gauge of colors for spellcasting for reasons. Okay, so at this point, um, we've mapped out with Dungeon 1, so I'm going to push R, and I'm going to read some scrolls. I'm going to check this out. Scroll of Poison. Okay, great. And it's Identify. Perfect. Let's identify our potions. Um, Potion of Brilliance. Fantastic. Remember, whenever I'm identifying potions, I always identify a stack that has more than one. Um, because, you know, if you get three of something, it generally is better. It's usually a heal kind of potion, and you want to identify those fat first. Um, but we got Brilliance. Now, Brilliance will increase your... Um, I'll show you right here. Um, Potion of Brilliance. It says it will increase the power of your spells and have your magic cost. So it will make your spells more powerful and make them cost half as much. So it's fantastic. Um, for a spellcaster, we're going to read Identify again on... I'm just going to go from the top to the bottom. Degeneration and Heal Wounds. Fantastic. We found Heal Wounds. I'm going to read this scroll here. It's Fear its teleportation, and its magic mapping. I'm just going to push 5 to wait until the teleport kicks in. And we're done with all our scrolls, and um, we have identified some potions, and we're ready for dungeon 2. So I'm just going to push shift X, and then push shift greater than to go down the steps here. And we're on the steps. Okay, I'm back after a short break, and I thought, you know, one thing I didn't do very adequately when I was you know, just reflecting on the guide as I've made it so far here for a caster is explain why I chose Deep Elf. I said they were the best at just slinging spells, but I didn't really tell you why. 
So um, the reason why the Deep Elf is so good at slinging spells is because of our skill aptitudes. So, for example, they have a plus three aptitude to spellcasting, a plus one to conjurations, um, and across the board, all spellcasting skills. Um, I'm just going to, uh, for example, um, push shift asterisk to show you all skills. Um, you can see that across the board, like, they're amazing at casting pretty much everything, except air magic, which they they're just have a zero for, but everything else they have, like, a plus to do that, okay? They're good at dodging, and they're good at stealth, um, and they're even good at ranged weapons. Like, range, you know, Deep Elf is a, not a bad uh, ranged user if you want to just shoot bow, or, uh, bows and stuff like that. The only problem is that uh, they're just um, not great with health. And you can see that they're terrible with weapons. They have awful negative um, aptitudes to fighting, um, to wearing armor, you know, shields and stuff like that. So they're not the best. They also have um, uh, not the best hit points. They, I think they have maybe 10% less hit points than normal, something like that. Um, but they're good because of their skill aptitudes um, and, you know, their intelligence. So that's kind of where I was thinking with that. All right, so let's go ahead then and pop down to level two. All right, we've got a hobgoblin. We'll just blast this guy with magic dart. If things are easy, you use magic dart. If they get hard, you start to think about using um, your searing ray. Now, this is where the fun begins as a spellcaster. We got a spell book, which has hailstorm, ice form, and simulacrum. Now, unfortunately, if I push shift M to look at these spells, Whenever you get new spells, just push Shift-M to open up your memorized screen to see what spells you have access to. And you can see that, like, Hailstorm um, and Ice Form and Simulacrum, these are high-level spells. This is a high-level spell book. Um, but what you have to do with a caster is make some choices with where you're going to go after your initial spell book. So just, you know, this is going to wear off. Like, we're going to get Mystic Blast here which is cool, um, but it's not going to be powerful enough to take on enemies um, after a certain point. So you're going to need some better spells. You're going to need some um, more versatile spells, some spells that give you perhaps some translocation to move around, um, you, spells that give you crowd control, uh, spells that give you damage of different element types, and a lot of that is going to be just dictated by what spell books you can find, Okay. The cool thing about Deep Elf is that basically you can use... Every spell school is pretty much okay for you, so you can go into it. But the tricky thing about a caster is you kind of have to make some decisions because there's only so much experience to go around. You can't, like, do everything. So you can't just go every magic school and be effective. You really have to kind of make a decision. Again, it's going to be dictated by what you find, but also by your level of comfort in the game and what spells you want, all right? So we're going to start thinking about that. Now, luckily, right now, we don't have to think about that. Um, here's some gnolls. Okay, so gnolls are a good example of a situation where we want to use um, Searing Ray. Now, Searing Ray is amazing because not only is it damage that increases over time it's, and it's efficient, but it actually penetrates the first target and does damage in a ray through enemies so you can hit multiple targets so what you want to do with searing ray is try to position yourself um, in such a way like this where both of these gnolls are going to come to me and i can hit them with one searing ray so i'm going to actually um i'm just going to blast this guy with magic dart uh, there's three of them this might be too many we might need to run after we kill two of them but we'll see and now, at this point, I'm going to um, push our macro. I'm not going to actually, I'm sorry, I'm not going to use my macro because I want to aim this. I'm going to push Z, B to cast Searing Ray, and I'm going to aim it here on this back guy, okay? And you'll see that we have hit um, the guy in front. It missed the guy in the back, but that's okay. And we're going to maintain the ray. Now, when you maintain the ray, you are still aiming it at the target that you initially aimed it at. So if it moves you will still target it, and it will go in a path toward that and hit everything along that path. So if I push period, you'll notice that I hit the guy in front of me and the guy behind me, okay? Um, and I'm going to actually maintain the ray again, and one more time. Okay, 
Um, and it says you finished channeling your searing ray. And we actually got hit right here. And these guys aren't dead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going... I have two castings of ray less, and I think I can kill the guy in front of me. But if I can't, okay, I do have... Um, a potion of heal wounds and a potion of magic if I had to in an emergency. Now, I can't take many hits from this guy. Um, actually, if I push X and B um, on this guy right here, uh, he could hit us for 16 damage, which would kill us. So we have to be careful um, and just hope that he doesn't. I could try to run away, but remember, um, this is why playing a caster is a little bit harder. In this version of Crawl, um, he might get some free attacks on me if I try to just run from him. So I want to just kill him at this point. I committed. I'm going to cast Searing Ray. I'm going to push Z. I'm going to push um, uh, B to cast Searing Ray, and I'm going to do this. And we killed them both. So luckily, we rolled really high on that Searing Ray. And that's what Searing Ray can do. And now we need to just immediately go back up the steps and run away and rest. Boom. How about that? So I'm going to keep exploring. And here's an unknown altar. I'm going to kill this guy. Um, remember, unknown altar is uh, a great way to get a god early if you want one. Um, but And you want to have some fun, but it's too random. We don't want to, for example, get like Trog um, or Okawaru. That would be a disaster for us. Um, we want to get... Um, I'm going to try to get us Vehumet. Uh, here's an amulet of regeneration, which it's not the best for us. We'd rather have like mana, you know, magic regeneration, but um, this is still good. We're, it's better than what we have, which is nothing. So we're going to equip it. Now you've seen some ring mail and you've seen some leather armor. Both of those are actually excellent um, a potential for us in terms of if we want to have a little bit of damage mitigation. But for now, I'm just going to go full on robe and kind of just um, hope that we don't die. It is the least... Oh, pair of boots. Great. Limit to our spellcasting and our evasion. So a robe is great. Uh, you can get good robes. You can win the game in a robe. Do it all the time with spellcasters. Um, but, you know, maybe it's easier if you get some cool casting armor, like some dragon scales, steam dragon scales, or something you can fit into easily that's not too encumbering. But anyway... Um, our armor class is two, which is pitiful, but luckily, um, we can just, you know, put on these boots and get a third armor class and none of the other armor that we wear is going to impact our spell casting or evasion. It's only our body armor that does that. Okay. So you can wear gloves, you can wear boots. I'm just going to magic dart everything and we're level four and yes, we got an intelligence point. All right, let's go up the steps and, um, let's think about what spell we want to memorize. Now, these are still kind of too hard for us to cast, uh, but I'm going to tell you right now that Fulminant Prism and Hailstorm are cool. Mystic Blast is great also. Uh, oh, and we picked up a book that I didn't see that just had Fireball, Starburst, and Ignition. Okay, so in my opinion, me personally... I like Fireball, Starburst, and Ignition better than I like Hailstorm, Ice Form, and Simulacrum. So I'm going to go for Fire um, eventually, but again, I mean, five, like level 5, level 6, level 8, those are endgame spells. Uh, we're not going to get there yet, but eventually. So I'm going to keep chain, uh, training Conjuration, um, but I'm not really going to... I don't even care about these. I could memorize these if I wanted to, um, but they're so hard. I could get you know, IB, uh, IMB right now and start training translocation to make this easier, but I don't think we need to do that. You can do whatever you want. Um, you know, maybe it's nice to have an AoE spell, but I'm going to go ahead and just stick with what I've got at this level, which is Searing Ray, because it's fantastic. I'm going to go down and just keep exploring. And this is an adder. Um, adders are annoying, of course, because they can poison you. But the good thing is magic dart doesn't miss. So it might take a few to kill the guy, depending on what you roll. But at least they're not going to move. There's Zin. Zin is fine. Zin's always a good choice. Um, but I would like to have Behumet because it's just the most straightforward of the gods for spellcasting, in my opinion. Especially if you're trying to be a damage spellcaster. All right, there is Dungeon 2 done, and we got some identification scrolls, so let's read these and start looking at these potions. Mutation, hilarious, um, and uh, attraction. So those are both not great for us right now. 
Um, and we're then going to read this of four. Scroll of Butterflies Funny. Um, scroll of Silence. Okay, we have to wait until that wears off so we can read again. Um, immolation and Blink. Okay, so we've identified a bunch of good scrolls. And uh, we have heal wounds i'm going to go ahead and just push d we're going to get rid of degeneration and we're going to get rid of attraction i never want those potions get rid of it great so at this point um again you know what i would suggest to you is just describe these spells and see which one looks good to you so fulminant prism um makes a prism that like is like a ticking time bomb so it kind of goes out and then after a bit it'll explode um, and it's cool when it works, but it's a little bit wonky to get going, in my opinion, in terms of its usability. Uh, you obviously can't use it if someone's right next to you. Um, Dazzling Flash is good that can, like, be an AoE escape spell to blind targets so you can run away, so that might be helpful. And IMB, basically, um, also detonates a crackling sphere of destructive energy, and, um, it, but this targets instantly. So, as long as you have some space away from yourself, um, you can just blast things, okay, uh, and knock things back away from you with this, so it's also very good. So, it's up to you which one you want to focus on memorizing. Um, I personally, looking at this, I'm not huge on Dazzling Flash or Fulminant Prism, for that matter. I like Prism better than Flash, um, but I kind of, a lot of the times, just go right for IMB. Uh, and you and lean on that but if i can find some other spells i might want to choose that instead and twist in that direction it just depends on what books we find but we are fourth level and we did clear dungeon two and we're training well and we're rocking and rolling so everyone this is a good place to end this first episode uh covering a spell caster in dungeon crawl stone soup version point two nine here with a deep elf conjurer and i hope you're finding this helpful and useful let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and we'll keep seeing if we can make some progress with this character now i do want to say in the previous uh guides we we cleared the game with the minotaur and with the gargoyle but i don't know if we'll clear it with the caster casters are kind of like anything can go at least with me um they're my weakest type of well they're not actually my stabber is my weakest but i'm not the best with the caster um because they just can die so quickly without forgiveness um because their hit point pool and their uh, armor and everything but if you can make it past a certain point they start to get really really strong and harder to kill it's just the early game can go badly like an ogre can just one shot you or something like that uh so you know we might not make it but we're going to see how far we can make it and i'm going to use all of my tricks to try to uh help us survive all right everyone thanks for watching take care